Jesus is Lord. The universe declares it. Sun, moon and stars in heaven cry. Jesus is Lord. Welcome to Greensport Parish Church. Uh, today uh, we're going to be using the Order of Holy Communion for our recorded service. And it's something of a red letter day for us here in Groomsport because for the first time since February, uh, we will be celebrating Holy Communion in our church halls. Uh, many churches have been celebrating Communion during lockdown. We haven't got round to it yet because we wanted to make sure we got the logistics right, that we knew how to do it, keeping everybody safe. And then here in Northern Ireland, of course, we've said, uh, been subject to another two-week lockdown. So today in the church hall, the Canon Tiny Hall, we'll be celebrating Holy Communion together. So I hope that you can join with us wherever you are during this service in your own version of Holy Communion. And maybe if you want, now's the time to pause uh, your computer or your recording and nip out to get a glass of wine and a piece of bread so that later on in this service you can join with me in taking bread and wine. As I say you are all very welcome and today is the third Sunday of Advent and we'll be thinking about the role of the Baptist, John the Baptist, the forerunner. And so our service begins, and I pray that grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ will be with you all. And because we're coming into our Father's presence, it's right to clear the decks spiritually, emotionally, mentally, to be in the right frame of mind for this service. So one of those lovely prayers from our prayer book. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we call to mind our failings, our sin. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God who forgives all those who truly repent, have mercy upon each one of us. Pardon and cleanse us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. For this prayer too is made through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a special prayer for this, the third Sunday of Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, Grant, Lord Jesus, that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. And Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put upon us the armour of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, 
we may rise to the life immortal. These prayers we make through him, Father, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading, and it comes from the Old Testament, from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 61. Isaiah looks forward to a time when people will proclaim the kingdom of God and prepare his way. He writes this. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On Jordan's back, the Baptist's cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Our gradual hymn, that is the hymn before our gospel reading, we sing it wherever we are, we sing it now.
Hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St John, the first chapter, and beginning to read at the sixth verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, well, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why are you then baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptising. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that I might speak this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are listening or whenever you are listening, I pray that I might speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. What would you do if you knew something about one of our political masters? Something that was so important that you felt that you, the people ought to know about it. But that politician or our political masters and mistresses had gained from the High Court a super injunction telling the world that whatever it was that you happen to know about and that the reporters and journalists of our media know about as well, that they were not to broadcast it or print it. What would you do about it? I think you'd be quite cross. I know what would happen if I knew something about one of our political leaders, if I was go to go and stand up on the Groomsport Road roundabout, it's about a mile in that direction, and stand up on the roundabout and then start proclaiming that George had done this or Jane had done that, I would be arrested and probably thrown into jail and probably have to stand trial uh, for slander or criminal libel or something like that. We're not allowed to say at times things which are true. We're not allowed to speak the truth. One of the great things about the story of John the Baptist is that he didn't care. He did not care. There's a story in uh, Matthew's Gospel, I think it is, where the people, Herod and his wife, came out to visit him. He was a bit of a a showman, if you like. People were curious about him. He was dressed strangely, uh, dressed in camel's cloak, a cloak of camel's hair, we hear, with a leather belt, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And there he is on the banks of the Jordan, proclaiming the kingdom of God, all these sorts of things. And he was a curiosity. And people came out not just to listen to him and be persuaded by him, but he was a showman and they wanted to see what he was about. Well, Herod turned up and his wife turned up and they listened to him. And what John had to say to Herod was not very polite, told him the truth. You know, you are a viper, you are a hypocrite, you know, you are an adulterer, you are a usurper, you are a thug. 
You are a dictator. You are a tyrant. You bend the truth. And we all know that what happened to John not long after that was that he was arrested and thrown into prison. And Herod, having boxed himself into a corner, ended up having John the Baptist's head chopped off. We're a bit like that today. We're not allowed to speak the truth for fear of offending somebody or for fear of our own lives. I just remind you of the prayer I read earlier on, the collect, the special prayer for the third Sunday of Advent. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you. That was the point of the Baptist. He's there to tell the world that there is another one coming. And if you think John's message is powerful uh, and really damning in what he has to say, you wait, says John, you wait until the Messiah comes, then you're in for a shock. And the prayer then goes on to say, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just. That's a powerful ministry, that's a powerful injunction for somebody like me in the full-time pay of the church. I do worry at times that the church has lost its prophetic voice. Sometimes we're more worried about being politically correct rather than being politically incorrect, telling people when they're wrong for fear of offending them, telling the world that God will come again, not just at Christmas, Emmanuel, God is with us, but he will come again to judge everything, the world and all that therein is. And I think we have a responsibility to remind people. I don't think, I know we have a responsibility to remind people that this is a truism. It's going to happen, not necessarily today, or tomorrow or the day after. I don't know. Jesus said, nobody knows except the Father in heaven. But the point is, and the point of the Baptist's ministry is, are you ready? Are you ready for the coming of Christ at his second coming, that time when he comes to judge the world? It's an awesome prospect. It's an awesome responsibility for myself and those who call themselves priests, deacons, pastors, ministers, bishops, archbishops, those who call themselves Christian, it's not just my job, it's all those who go to church, all those watching this service now. It's our responsibility to remind the world that Jesus came, yes, 2,000 years ago, but he promised that he will return. And as the Baptist reminds us, we need to be awake and ready for that coming. God grant us grace that we may so be. Amen. We believe that Christ will come again. We declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hark! What a sound, and too divine for hearing, stirs on the earth and trembles in the ear. Is it the thunder of the Lord's appearing? Is it the music of his people's prayer? Another Advent hymn.
to that point in our service where we join together in prayer. And maybe we'll begin our prayers by just thinking about the fact that we're not sitting alone in our sitting rooms or in our dining rooms. Uh, we are joined together in this service with others, not just here in Groovesport or Bangor or County Down, but with people all around the world. Jesus said that where two or three are gathered together in his name, he would be there also. So wherever you are, just for a moment, call to mind the others who are praying with you at this moment. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear the prayers of those who ask in faith. Lord of your people, strengthen your church in all the world. Particularly on this, the third Sunday of Advent, we learn of our responsibilities once again, responsibilities as ministers and stewards of your love, your glory, your majesty. Give us courage to proclaim your wonderful name. Give us courage to speak the truth unto power. Give us love to love your people, even if they do not wish to hear our message. In this diocese of Down and Dromore, we remember again our bishop in prayer, Bishop David and his wife Hilary and all his staff at Church of Ireland House in Belfast. And I'd ask you too to remember Stuart and Amanda here with me in church today recording this service. And remember too those down in the Canon Tiny Hall celebrating with us this service of Holy Communion. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, look with favour upon this world that you have made, a world in desperate need of your love, a world longing, yearning for peace and salvation. Help us to pray for all the nations of the world today. Help us to be ministers, not just of your love, but of your justice and your peace. That the world may come to live together in harmony. In our own land, in our supposed United Kingdom, which seems to be fracturing, once again, we pray for our politicians, the Prime Minister in London, the First Ministers in Edinburgh and Cardiff, and here in this province, the First and Deputy First Ministers at Stormont. We thank you for the breakthrough in the production of a vaccine. And we pray that those who need it most will be the first to receive it. We pray for our land, particularly we remember our Queen and all who hold authority under her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of our relationships, Comfort and sustain the communities in which we live and work. We particularly pray this year for the communities in which we live ravaged by COVID-19. We've all read or heard the news of businesses going bust, people out of work, people not able to pay their rent or their mortgages, now living in fear of losing their homes. as we pray for those so much worse off than ourselves in our communities and our neighbourhoods. We pray too for a just settlement when the economic crisis comes to be recognised. 
We pray too for those travelling home for Christmas, students especially from universities across the water, those we love that we will not be able to see this year at Christmas because of travel and Covid restrictions. But just for a moment, we hold them in our hearts. This Advent, loving God, enable us to serve our families and our friends and to love one another just as you love us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all healing, it is our prayer that you will relieve and protect those who are sick or suffering at the moment. We pray again for those with coronavirus, those who have been desperately affected by COVID-19, those who have been hit by it indirectly. We think of Sharon and David and Fiona whose father, Ernie, died of Covid the other week. But we pray too for those others who have had to miss hospital appointments, who have had to miss consultations, those who are fearful and worried about that little lump that's appeared on their neck or in their breast. We especially Pray for those who are frightened, loving God. Christ Jesus came into the world to bring his peace and his contentment. We pray something of that peace and contentment will be with those who are so afraid today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, the Lord of all eternity, we pray that you will bind us together by your Holy Spirit in communion with the Baptist and with dear Ernie priests and all who, having confessed the faith, have died in the peace of Christ. Grant that we may entrust our lives, that we may entrust one another to you, loving Lord God, that we may come with all your saints to the joys of your eternal kingdom. These prayers, loving God, we make through him whose coming again we wait with eager anticipation, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, sing to Jesus, his the scepter, his the throne. Alleluia, his the triumph, his the victory alone.
So we come to that part of our service where we consecrate the bread and the wine of this Holy Communion service. And I pray that wherever you are, that the Lord be with you. I pray that you will lift up your hearts and I pray that with me you will give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away from you, you didn't reject us, rather you came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross, and with love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks. You broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, Lord Jesus, you took the cup of wine. You gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and this wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace, one in Christ our risen Lord. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of thanks and praise, and we lift our voices to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond all our words. Amen. 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 And as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And this bread which we break, is a sharing in the body of Christ. We being many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. So wherever we may be today, here in church, 
in the canon tiny hall, in the comfort of your own homes, wherever you may be. Draw near with me with faith to receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ broken for us and his blood shed for us. Let us eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died, rose and will come again for love of each one of us. And because of all these things, let us feed on him in our hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. We draw this time together to a close. Loving Father, we give you thanks for these heavenly gifts. We pray that you will kindle us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that when Christ does come again, we may shine as lights before his face. We ask it, Father, through him who is alive, and reigns with you and will indeed come again, with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And a blessing for Advent. I pray. I pray that Christ, the Son of Righteousness, will shine upon you, that Christ, the Son of Righteousness, will gladden your hearts and scatter the darkness from before your feet. And I pray too that the blessing of our loving God, Father, the coming Son and the Holy Spirit, I pray the blessing of God will be with you and those you love and pray for. God's blessing be with you and them today, this Advent and forevermore. Amen. Make way, make way for Christ the King in splendour arrives. Fling wide the gates and welcome him into your lives. We go from this time together in peace to love and serve our Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>